All right, welcome back to season two of our show. It's Eye Around Roast for you today. We're gonna to show you how to get this marinated up and cooked up. Stick around, don't go anywhere. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna trim this roast up. Now, this is an Eye Around Roast. They're great for stews. They're great for just long roast. Um, if you wanna roast this for hours, that's what they're good for. They don't have a lot of fat inside. It's got good marbleization to it though, but you're not gonna cut this up and make any mistakes. It just won't happen. So there's some fat on the outside of this one. This is how they usually look. This one has no silver skin on it. So I'm gonna leave all this little bit of fat here and let it be our friend. Kind of use it as our buffer. It has a little fat cap here and I'm gonna cut this down just a little bit. I'm not gonna take too much of this off. And this is going to be the bottom side that I'm roasted on next to the fire. So a little off me, a little bit more protection. So we'll just get that right out of there. And this is not a, uh, a tasty piece of fat. It's not silver skin, but it's also not a tasty piece of fat either. So I'll just get that out of here. That's basically it. Anything like that, just kind of take it down. And we'll roast on this side and this will just basically render off in our fire. There you have it. If you were putting this in a stew, I would take this off. Most of this fat I would get out of here if I was stewing it down, because you won't need it. Especially if you go to stew this down over top of uh, some fresh veggies, you don't really need that there. So, and that is it with the trimming. All right, so we're gonna get on to our seasonings now. So over here I have just a little white wine. Cheap white wine, nothing fancy. Worcestershire, right here is I have a little thyme. Vegetable oil, black pepper, kosher salt. What we'll do is we'll season our roast first with salt and pepper. Now I'm gonna make a marinade for this, but the reason why I'm seasoning it with the salt and pepper first is because I kinda know how much salt to put on when I do it like this. And if I do it in the marinade, I really kind of lose track of how much salt to put on to this size piece of meat. So in like that with the salt. It's a pretty thick piece of meat. It's five pounds, not too crazy. So you want a good amount of salt on there. And this, you're gonna let it kind of marinate in for a couple hours before it goes on to the cooker. Or you could even go overnight. It's not gonna harm it. All right, so we're gonna go in with our pepper. Same thing. This is a heavy gauge pepper. Anything that falls off during the marinade, it'll just be in the marinade. So I'm gonna go quite heavy on this. You can even hear it hit the, the pan there. And I'm gonna use the pan to pick up the rest of it. Both ends. And just let the roast pick it up. Just like that. All right, so we got the roast seasoned. And now, let's make our marinade. So right here we have a little bowl. We're gonna go in with a little of our white wine. Worcestershire, just eyeballed out to your liking. Nothing specific here, I don't have a 
specific recipe for you guys. So you just kind of eyeball it out. And I like recipes like this because if you don't like something, leave it out. If you don't like thyme, you could put some oregano in there. But it's very basic, very simple. If you don't want to use the veggie oil, you can substitute with olive oil or any oil you like. Peanut oil, nothing specific. All right. It's not a lot of liquid. You don't need a lot. I'm going to use a little bit more Liam Perrins because I want more of that flavor in there. That's the original Wishkashir. I like to use the originals. That's it. We're going to use a bag, a plastic bag. We're going to get it inside our plastic bag. Let's just move this off to the side. And in the bag we go. Doesn't fit too good, but it's in there. All right. Now that we have that in our bag, let's see if we can get it down in there. I don't want to break the bag. And then with our marinade, we go. Just like that. And what you want to do. I got a little touch of wine left over here, won't make a difference. Just put a little splash in there. Like I said, nothing specific or exact because this is very forgiving. And just get the air out of there. Bring it up to the bag as you see it. A little bit will spill out. Just get it out of there and zip it. Now you got all the air out of there. A little bit on the table, but that's it. Now this is gonna marinate like this. Matter of fact, I'm gonna get a little bit more of that air out of there. So I'm gonna open back up again, just a corner. And I'm gonna bring it back to the top again and get that air out of there and zip it and there you have it just like that and now you can kind of put it in your fridge and just turn it I'm going to let this go overnight if you wanted to go just a couple hours you could do the same thing and that's it all right into the fridge we go with this And tomorrow, she's out onto the cooker. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. All right, this is the Golden's cast iron cooker. It's 100% cast iron. Let's show you around. So this is a Golden's cast iron cooker, like I said. 100% cast iron. It's built like a tank. She's solid. She's in a cradle, made in the USA, built right here in good old Georgia. She's on a nice caster with some tires on her. This thing weighs a, a ton. And I try to keep it in one location and I keep it oiled outside. And it's been a great cooker to me. I had this now about two years or three. And she's never let me down. Let's show you the inside. Really, really heavy. I got cast iron grates on here as well too. And like I said, everything in here is cast iron. I just cleaned it out, oiled it down. And she's just a fantastic cooker. These are double grates. I took this grate and put it on top of here. It comes with a few accessories and you could just lift up this grate. And the way I got it set up is this is gonna be my fire set up here. So I'm gonna put my coals in here. This is just a basket out of a Weber grill, so I'm inventive. 
I'll put my coals on that side and I'll cook indirect on that side. And that's it. Pretty simple cooker, a vent on the bottom, down here. It's got a screen as well too, so your coals won't fall through. And you can open it all the way up just to get it out of here. So this has been a really good cooker to me. And the one thing I love about this cooker, it won't break on you. I had two eggs and uh, the first one I hit it with a weed eater. Uh, Rock came up and hit it and cracked it. This guy, not going anywhere. This thing, will you can weld it to your family because this thing is a family heirloom. It's going to stay around forever. It's got an accurate gauge on the top. And this thing is just fantastic with holding temperatures. So it holds temperatures, I mean, spot on. And when I first got it, I was breaking it in. The temperatures fluctuate a little bit. But now that it's broke in, I can lock it in and it stays right there. It stays at 250, 300, whatever I want to run it at. And it's very efficient on coals. So um, I would say it's just as efficient as a ceramic cooker, which is an egg or any ceramic cooker you have. It's basically a, a pot, a clay pot. That's what I look at the egg like, just a clay pot. And uh, I just don't want to spend my money on broken eggs anymore. The second one, a landscaper broke. And I believe he broke it the same way. He had it with, a, with a, a weed eater too, and one of the rocks flew up. But the money that you spend on this stuff, I want to know that it's going to last forever. It's a lot more expensive or a little bit more expensive than the egg, depending on what you get and what size you get of the egg. But at the same time, this guy would be around forever. I'm not knocking the egg. I think it's a great cooker. When I had them, they were fantastic. But I think this one's just a little bit better. That's it. We're going to show you a fire setup. We'll meet you right back here. So this is my wood setup. I got a nice piece of wood on the top here. We're using oak today. This is red oak. That's what we're flying with today. I got a fire starter set up right here in the middle. And that's it. I'm going to light that, drop this on top, and we're rolling. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. So our fire's lit. Now I took that piece of wood off the top and I'm going to wait for that coal to get burned down. And when that coal starts to get burned down, I'm going to throw that wood on top. Because I don't want that wood to get burned down. It's just one piece. It's going to probably be out of there in the first hour. This is probably going to only be about a two and a half hour cook. Not a long time and we're going to rock this at about 250. I'm keeping it down because it's beef. It's not a very big piece of beef. It's five pounds and that's how I want to keep my, my fire low. I'm cooking on the opposite side so nothing's going to be dripping in the coals and we're going to keep that fire low. We'll see you right back here. Don't go anywhere. All right, we're ready to get this roast on. All right, here we go. I'm going to get this here. Now, this is our fire, like I said. I put that little log in there. I'm gonna put this back a little bit more here because I might put some doggies on here too. Just get my probe plugged in so I can tell my internal temperature and what the fire's cranking at. And that's it. I'm gonna close this up, get her stabilized, and we'll meet you right back here. Stick around, don't go anywhere. Okay, now that our roast is on the cooker, we're just going to show you a quick pickled broccoli that you can do the night before. So we got some broccoli here, fresh. And what you want to do is just start cutting it off. The stem. We're going to get those into the jar. Just get them in in pieces. Anything that's too big, you can just half them. Just go right in half with them. This is great for just a little snack to snack on. Or it goes great 
and a salad. So you make a salad and just put this on the side. I like it fresh on side of my meats. So if I'm having meats, maybe some white rice, and I just have this on the side with meat and white rice, good to go. All right, I'm gonna get these in here. And you could do this the night before. Only takes, I got some in the fridge right now ready to roll for a meal tonight. It doesn't take long to do this at all. We're almost there. And just stuff them right in. It's a great go-to, just as a snack. If you're hungry or your kids are hungry, you give them something healthy. I try to eat healthy too, and I try to eat bad. I try to do it all. All right, we're almost there. Let's see if I can get a couple more of these guys in here. And as you get them stuffed in there, when they soften just a little bit, it'll be easier to get them out. So now I'm gonna go on my bay leaf. Get your bay leaf in there. Try to get your bay leaf in there where it's dry. It'll be a little bit easier to get them in there. Let's try this side. That side one in a little bit easier. I'm gonna pull this back out and try this side. I stuffed these in here pretty good. Let's try this side and go straight down. There we go. And I'm gonna try a smaller piece on this side. Okay. Over here we have our coriander seed. So we're gonna dump some of that in there. Just judge it out. Get it down in there. This is some cloves. Peppercorn, black peppercorn. Get that down in there. Don't worry when the liquid hits it, it's gonna fill it in. Sugar to taste. This is a five tablespoons. So I'm gonna get that down in there because my family does like it a little on the sweet side. And salt. Just gonna go with a couple of teaspoons of salt. That's about it. Let's give that a little shake so it can go down in there. And like I said, when we start dumping our liquid, it's gonna take it right down in there. All right, so here we go with our liquid. 50-50, distilled vinegar. Gonna go one cup. And one cup of water. And I suggest you use a bottled water. Just 50-50 mixture. Use a bottled water. I happen to be on uh, well water, deep well water, which is very similar to spring water. All right, let's go some more. Same mixture, 50-50. Vinegar to water. And just mix it. Keep going as you get to the top. All right. Let's try half of it this time. I'm not gonna put as much. Bring it up about a quarter there. And in we go. Maybe I can get another piece of broccoli down in there. Let's see. Just 
get it in there. I've got one piece left. I'm gonna get that in there too. Just push it on in there. All right, let's cover. Perfect. Shake that down in there a little bit. We're gonna put the lid on. And we're gonna give it a little shake. Just to make sure everything is cooked in. All right, there you have it. So now, in the fridge it goes, a couple of days. I usually do mine a day before, which is fine. And it'll stay crunchy in there for quite some time. You'll probably get about a month out of that. That's about it. We'll see you right back here. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. Let's check on this guy. All right, I threw a couple of dogs on there and it looks like our roast is doing pretty good. Now we're up to 120. We got a little ways to go. I'm gonna pull this at about 128, 29, somewhere in there, 130, and that's it. Our fire is going nice and easy. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. Okay, we let it go up to 130. We're ready to pull this. We got a couple of requests that we wanted a little bit more done. So here we go. Off with it we go. We're gonna meet you right inside. All right, so we're just gonna show you guys how to make a couple of these homemade french fries. So we're doing homemade french fries today. These are very large jumbo potatoes. So the first thing you wanna do is cut them in half. I'll do it that way and then I'll cut them in half that way. And what I'll do is just turn them down this way so it's laying flat. I don't cut myself. And then I'm gonna just start to slice down the sides Slice again, slice down the sides. Now there's a little rot in there. We're gonna get rid of that. Can't tell it from the outside, but now it's open. And into the fryer they go. We're just throwing them in the, the basket of the fryer and we're not gonna drop them yet. Now these fries hold a lot of moisture. Let's put those off to the side. Little rot on there. These fries hold a lot of moisture but they're not gonna pop. Unlike french fries, frozen ones in the store, these are gonna cook a lot slower and they're not gonna pop all over the place. So you don't have to worry about dropping them and having them pop. So that's about how you want them, like that. And they're thick steak fries. And they're not that thin. So I'm gonna go in like that and just keep cutting them. And I'm gonna drop them after about a potato and a half. So again, you want them looking like that. And some of them have some blemishes on them, don't worry. I like to get some good big pieces in like that. Like a nice steak fry like that. Just keep cutting and we're almost ready to drop these that was a big potato so we're just gonna go with one potato and as you can see one potato makes a lot this is a big deep fryer so I am gonna go with about another half one again just come down just cut them 
You don't need a potato cutter. Just take your time. And use a decent sized knife. And you'll get through with them. Alright, I'm ready to drop. And I'll see where my room is from there. Give them a little shake. And now while those are in, I'm going to drop some more. I cut a little bit more. And when those bubbles actually pipe down, we'll drop some more. So I'll bring up my fryer like that. I'll drop a couple of more in there. Just so I don't get splashed. And they're still frying in there. And I'll just drop them. That's that. So we're going to let these fry. Total fry time for these is probably about 11 minutes. We're going to double fry these. That means that what we're going to do is pull them up out of the grease halfway through. About 6 minutes in, we're going to pull them out of the grease. We're going to let them sit for about 3 minutes cool down then we're going to drop them back in. What that's going to do is allow our oil to heat back up and we're going to get a really nice crispy fry out of that. And that's it. We'll meet you right back here when we get rid of the double fry. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. Alright. We're about four minutes in. Four and a half minutes. They're frying pretty quickly. I got a higher temperature going. I'm running about 375. I'm pulling these. I'm going to let them rest for about three minutes I'm gonna let that oil heat back up and then I'm gonna drop them then we're gonna pull them and we're gonna show you what they look like so stick around don't go anywhere all right like I said we're at about ten and a half minutes in so we're, we're pulling these you can hear these little guys screaming Now usually I let them sit in the basket for a little bit, but you don't want to really let them sit there because they're going to get soggy on you and they're going to get really oily. So you want to drain the oil. This is how I drain my oil. I just go right in like that. I'm going to salt them and just give them a quick toss. We'll meet you right back here. We're going to get to cutting up the rest of these and frying them up. We'll see you right back here. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. All right, here we are. We're on the chopping block. Let's see what we got. Look at that. All right, so first thing we're going to do is cut these strings. I pulled this at 130. I didn't want it to run over. It's a lean piece of meat. Let's cut these strings out of here. We don't want any accidents, so make sure you get your strings off. All right. On to the block we go. And with no further ado, let's cut into her. Now, the grain is going this way. I'm going against the grain. Look at that. She is beautiful. That's what you want. Nice, thin slices. Kind of on an angle. There we have it. Beautiful piece of meat. Let's give that a pit master taste. Excellent. And smoky. Very tender.
right. And slice a couple more pieces. See what this looks like on a plate. Now, when you serve this, just make sure they're really thin. I like to drop them down the line like that. Just like that. And I'll leave that little pit master base there. All right, so we're gonna get our french fries on. These are these nice steak fries that we have. We'll jump those on the plate. These are very heavy, these fries. So they're not like normal fries. I mean, one of these fries is like five of your normal fry sizes. So they pack a lot of punch. All right, we'll have that there. And then we'll follow it up with our nice pickled broccoli. Nice, healthy meal. Get our broccoli there. Never have too much broccoli. All right, and that's it. Now we're gonna just put a little oregano on the fry. And right here we have balsamic vinegar and butter. And we're gonna put that on our steak. Just a little steak sauce. a little bit more. And there it is. That's it. We're going to show you what this looks like from a few different angles. We're just going to turn it. I'll show you that side. And we're gonna go back and turn it again and show you this side. But I do think that this side would be the best. Like that. All right, we're gonna get situated and we're gonna meet you right back here. Stick around, don't go anywhere. All right, and there it is, eye round roast. Smoked to perfection. Served with a reduced balsamic steak sauce, with basil, fresh french fries, pickled broccoli. You can't go wrong. And if you like this video, and more than about the come, please hit that like button and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that little notification bell so you get all the videos first. That way you get the videos first. And with no uh, hesitation here, gotta get that little pit master taste.